Our next honoree is Christopher Slattery, whose name has become synonymous with the pro-life movement. In fact, when I asked him for a bio, he immediately started with the years of work in Operation Rescue. But we want to know who is Chris Slattery. So I begin with his birth in Manhattan in 1955 in the French hospital, which he is quick to point out was closed for doing illegal abortions. <laughs> he grew up in Staten Island and went to Boston College. There he studied business management and went into advertising from 1978 to 1990. His activities with Operation Rescue led to three arrests in 1988 and 89, and he became its spokesman. For that, in 1990, in his words, I was hunted down by NARAL, and now, activists who came to my office. After three days of this, he was served with a major federal lawsuit for leading Operation Rescue in New York City. <coughs> a few weeks later, he was fired, and at that moment decided to go full-time into pro-life work. During this time, in 1987, he married Eileen Tierney. And and their life together began. We'll get back to his heroic family later. In 1985, he founded Expecting Mother Care Frontline Pregnancy Centers, or EMC, in Manhattan. It has now grown to 15 offices in five counties and serves 8,000 8, 8, girls and women a year. His centers implement on-site clinical care and ultrasound and STD testing, full prenatal care programs. This supplements the main work of crisis pregnancy counseling. Since opening EMC, counselors have served over 100,000 girls and women and saved 36,500 children from abortion. five full-time EMC counselors, four ultrasound technicians, and a varying number of full-time interns. I could go on. Chris has been sued and survived the attacks of two New York State Attorney Generals, Robert Abrams and Elliot Spitzer. <laughs> and you know it goes on today if you've read the Times this week. <laughs> In addition, he organized the 40 Days for Life campaign and protests at Planned Parenthood conferences and sites. In 2007, EMC launched full-time mobile clinics with, an, with onboard ultrasound at New York abortion clinics. In 2008, he began the American Center for Pro-Life Action Program in a two-family house in the Central Bronx. There, over 150 young American and foreign pro-lifers are fed, trained, and deployed in counseling and street outreach. The Slatteries have raised four wonderful children. During that time, Eileen has been an elementary school teacher in New York and a math coach. I'll clap for that. <laughs> daughter Mary Francis, daughter Mary Francis, 22, works for the Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> Son Desmond, 20, has joined the Air National Guard. Bridget Rose, 18, is in SUNY Purchase. 
and Monica Ann, 14, is a sophomore at Maria Regina. What can we say? Thank you, Chris, you inspire us all. sound pretty staggering, you know, to have been able to be given the privilege of having now saved over 38,500 children since I wrote this. Well, that hasn't come from, from mass demonstrations, that hasn't come from mass advertising. That's come from encountering heart to heart, soul to soul usually one woman to another. Which is really the heart and soul of our movement, isn't it? It's when we relate to, we counsel, we give our heart and soul to another person who's in a crisis. Because that is that process of compassion and conversion. That is the heart and soul of our movement. And that's, that's what is being done all across America. I have the privilege of working in the abortion capital the heavy responsibility. We are in the biggest abortion market in the Americas, and it's a big responsibility. We have to stand up often as Davids against Goliath. Yes, you've read in the papers this week, we have another attack. But you know, this Tuesday morning when I made a phone call to double check what I had heard a rumor that there might be a press conference that morning. And on an hour's notice, I popped down to City Hall in Manhattan. And I got down there, and there were 40 pro boards in front of a podium like this. The usual suspects, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, NOW, uh, the City Council Speaker. And the media phalanx of cameras and, and radio interviewers and newspaper reporters and there I was, I was the only pro-lifer down there. But you know what, God had prepared me for that moment. Because I've had two attorney general attacks, I've been sued in federal court, I've had multiple suits by abortion clinics, and with the, the thousands of people that have prayed for us over the year, I had no fear. Because I knew that I was there on a special mission. No, this is not the Blues Brothers, on a special mission for God. But I was literally at the second they finished their last speaker, without interrupting their press conference, I approached the podium and said, here I am, I am the target of this investigation, I have a few comments to make, and you maybe have some questions. That night I got equal time to this group of 40 pro boys, just because I stood up for the children and our crisis centers. What's going on? What am I talking about? Why are they trying to shut down our centers? What do you think 38,000 abortions represents to the abortion industry? A heck of a lot of lost cash. 
They are angry at us. My greatest honor, really, is to be the worst nightmare of Planned Parenthood. That is, that is really what I am. They honor us and our counselors by trying to shut us down. Because the only reason they bother with us is because we, they continually complain. These people have the audacity to open up in our same building or across the street from us. How could they do this? They haven't figured out how to shut us down yet. So their latest tactic is to have us force us to put warning signs in our advertising, our brochures, our web pages, on our front doors, in our waiting rooms, and if we don't comply, $2,500 fines, and then they shut us down. But this coming Tuesday, I am putting together a crackerjack team of attorneys. <laughs> there have been two other similar suits that are being fought in the courts. No rulings in the country have come out yet on this kind of attack. There was an attack in Montgomery County, Maryland, and in Baltimore, and in Austin. In Austin, they chose not to fight it, but the great Archbishop of Baltimore led the counterattack. He used to be on auxiliary. Edward O'Brien of New York and headed up the military battalion. No one steps on his toes and no one's stepping on mine because we are not going to get shut down. I've had two attorney generals, two of the most pro abort and vicious anti lifers in the country, Robert Abrams and Elliot Spitzer. We got through those battles, we beat them. We've had other attacks on our outdoor program. Two years ago, they tried to shut us down and have all my staff swept off the street with arrests. We haven't had a single arrest, and this year we'll probably have a thousand saves at the abortion mills in the South Bronx. Because we have the power of prayer behind us, we have you people on your knees supporting us, with your prayers and your alms throughout the year. And you are the ones that should be applauding yourselves because you've made it possible for the councils. I want my three interns to please stand up. Greg, and Manuel. These are our three of our current Okay, you can say it. These are three of our current 10 interns, uh, and they represent the best or, of not only the US, but of Spain. Manuel is a, a Spanish citizen from the south of Spain. Greg is from upstate New York, and Heather is from California. And the three of them have made, have made very serious uh, commitments, as have hundreds of other young people who we continually bring in to train and deploy in the work. As I get more and more gray hair, we have to bring in the young people. They are the movement. Although most of us here have gray hair, these young people are our movement now. We are their prayer supporters. We are their funders. But these are the people, if you come, most of you have been to the March for Life in recent years, and most of you were going from the late 70s, as I was. But we've seen a revolution in that march, where it's now like 85% young people. That is the movement. That's not the future of the movement, that is the current movement. We just have to give them the opportunities to serve the expected mothers. You see, why do they want to stop us from counseling these girls? They say that we don't tell them the truth. But of course, the devil is the master of lies and deception, and Planned Parenthood and their allies, they are the masters of lies. And they are the ones that are not properly informing the girls and the women about the true risks and side effects and the damage and the dangers abortion presents them. Why do we get over half of the women who come into our centers who are considering or planning on an abortion every year to turn around and choose life. Because they do get the truth. They do want it. They desperately want to have these children. But they need help. So many of them are pressured and strong-armed 
and, and threatened that if they don't get this abortion, they'll be killed, kicked out, or seriously harmed by their boyfriends or families. They're not the enemy. The mothers are our friends, our allies. And even those moms that have made the tragic decision to get an abortion, they are going to be our future movement's leaders because they know the pain of abortion better than anyone. They can speak the truth. And we're working closer with the Silent No More Awareness Campaign people. We promote those events they have where more and more women and men are coming forward to tell the pain and the truth of their past abortions. And even, even actually the abortionists are not our enemies either. They are just lost and confused souls who we want to convert and bring over to our cause. I had the privilege as a young man of getting to know Dr. Bernard Nathanson shortly after he joined our cause. He was still confused. He was still for contraception. He still had exceptions. And I became his friend. Even when, you know, there were some of the pro-life movement that wanted to keep him, you know, away. You know, he's a little strange. 60,000 abortions under his belt. But I, he needed further conversion, and I had the privilege of being his confirmation sponsor into the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> pray. Please pray for Dr. Nathanson. He's sick and ill and... Um, in northern Manhattan, he, he's, he's still alive, not well, uh, and he's got a lot on his heart and soul. And this man really um, started a wave of conversions of former abortionists and, and clinic workers to come over to our side. He, we credit him with the Eclipse of Reason and the Silent Screen, two amazing videos that we still use. We use them out on the streets, and Manuel can tell you they have a stunning impact on the Spanish speakers and in Jackson Heights, who will surround the table watching the silent scream in Spanish. We've got, you know, these big, cheap, flat-screen TVs now. We put them out on the sidewalks, 37 inches, with Honda generators running right on the sidewalks. We're converting hearts and souls that way. I could go on. I just love this cause and movement, and you guys keep us going. I really ask you for prayers in this upcoming battle, uh, of the CPC kill bill. They want to kill us. They want to put us out of business. But nobody is going to fight them harder than me. And no one depends more for that tenacity and fighting spirit than I depend on you. So please be there for us in the coming months as the, uh, the battles in the media and in the city hall and in the courtrooms will play out. Thanks again for tonight. politics are probably the most despicable aspect of our work. We really, really do not like the political aspect of this. We love being with people like you, people who love life. But this year we have more candidates who are pro-life and come out and state that they are pro-life than we have in my memory, and hopefully that will continue with the support of I ask that on November 2nd, each and every one of us go out and vote, 
the pro-life candidates in our area, and we invite the people who we know who may be able, you know, not willing to go out and vote, provide them with transportation, do everything you possibly can to get all our friends out there to vote, because I think this year we can make a greater impact than we have in any year in the past, and we'll help Chris and Liz reduce their workload considerably. And above all else, before you go out to vote, pray. But we can't do it alone. This is God's work. Thank you all. Mayor Aaron Coleman, I understand there's two proclamations that uh, you have to present. Here's a real pro-life because what you just heard, we shouldn't follow that with anything other than a congratulations on selecting two extraordinary people. And I have two proclamations here, and I'm not going to read them. <laughs> but I, I want to say something about them. Chris, Liz, wow. wow. <laughs> in, in, very briefly, it talks about the wonderful work that they're doing and that they're leading. But the true measure of the success that they've had in this, this God's work that they're doing couldn't possibly be listed on here because it would be thousands and thousands and thousands of names of boys and girls and young men and young women who are alive today because of all of the work that they and everyone who has worked with them.